wrestle with some electronics here for a couple of minutes. I was trying to move over and switch to this one. So I think I'm hot on this one now. Um, if somebody be so kind as to bring me a box of Kleenexes, I, I tend to lose it right now and get a little bit of motion. So. Well, good morning, church. Um, I did not have a lot of time to prepare for this, and I would have done a much better job because after I got this sermon written, I realized it was a perfect tie to my last sermon. Oops. And the other thing I've learned uh, today is how God tends to work in amazing ways. Because the children's story and a lot of the messages and thoughts today all fit the path I'd like to run down to. So God's interesting. But before I do that, I just want to show you something I have put together. Um, this is a little marketing piece. This is a business card. The front side is in English and the back side is in Spanish. Uh, you can print more than a thousand of these for less than a hundred dollars. I've done all the hard work for you. And you can put your own email address. So you can give these things away and if people don't want them, throw them away. It ain't cost you but a dime. And so I put this together. I'm going to start giving these things out. It's, like it's, it's kind of like a glow track. But this really has the gospel message. The righteousness of Christ. Christ is our righteousness. Abbreviated in here. And the QR code sent them to a very size on amazing facts that will give them the full story. So if you're interested, send me an email. There's my email address, and I will send you the, uh, the, the, the Word document that you can just edit in and then send it to the people. And I'll send you the information on where you can send it. It's in English and in Spanish. Confess your sins to Christ, and He forgives them, giving you His righteousness. He offers you eternal life in the future. And wisdom, joy, and peace in this life. Pick on the image of our So, if you're interested, let me know. I put this together. I want one hand, something I just hand out and tear people throw them away, you know. And if I use low tracks too, I just, I'll just bring that up to you. Um, then a couple of other comments here. Um, one of the things I have discovered. And as I go through this presentation, I want you to think back about my message from last time, which was, we are in God's school. Amen. You know, we are in God's school. All the events of life lead somewhere. We talked about the life of David, and this life we got from one of the preachers that was here a few weeks ago. We talked about the life of David, and he had some bumps along the road. Because David was a solution that hadn't happened yet, which is the life. But David had to be made ready for that solution. You with me? So, David's out, I figure it kind of started like this, I'm going to lose my imagination a little bit. A little lamb wandered off, and go find him. That lamb wandered off again. So what do they do when a lamb, a lamb wanders off two or three times? Y'all remember? And, um, yeah, so those of you that have read the, the book, uh, The Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm, they break one of its legs, and he carries it around their neck when they go someplace. So they're forever next to and close to the shepherd. All right, and so that was probably some of his first trials. Then this uh, uh, ugly creatures of different kinds. Eventually a bear shows up and a lion, and he takes them all out. Well, something else I see, David's kind of got a little, you know, you pass the time sitting around, a bunch of lambs, you get bored, you got me? So I can see him with this slingshot. First of all, he tried to hit a tree, and that took a while. But he tried to hit a rock. And he set this little pebble on it, just too bad for the until they get knocked that pebble. Suddenly, he goes out there and says, who is this uncircumcised? And he takes care of it. You see, life, God is preparing us. Everything that happens into our life, God knew about. All right? He is never surprised. We read the book of Job, it makes it very uncomfortable, right? But God chooses at times to give Satan allow into enter our lives with hardships of various kinds. But this is for his ultimate glory. Now, with that as a background, I just got to put this thing together last year. This is my story, a chunk of my life that I'm going to cover today that God was preparing me for. You with me? So, my objective here tonight, today, 
is to shine a light on Jesus, our Savior, and also the great physician. So, my topic, my topic today is I'm going to talk about the Lord and His great mercy, blessed and healed me to serve. And now, He's been trying to teach me lessons through that, some of which I haven't learned yet. I'm very stubborn. Thank you. And sometimes it's going to take maybe take a two by four to get my attention. But he's been trying to teach me lessons. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk through a piece of my life and some tip, um, medical difficulties that I had. And I have got to stop here a second. I've got to go up here. Huge presenter view. Why is it not going in? Any experts know why this is not going in a presenter view? Because I want to have my comments. see what I see and now I can read all my comments. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to say if you couldn't see my comments. Um, so, um, the first miracle, um, there was actually several. I woke up with the symptoms of bladder cancer. means that the symptoms showed up, showed up a lot earlier. And so God knew ahead, had me on blood thinners, and turned a <coughs> blood thinner, which is a pain, into a blessing. But the next one was really interesting. Um, I called my local doctor, said, I can get you in in six weeks. Uh, and that's not quite sexy. So I called the Mayo Clinic on Monday, I was at the Mayo Clinic on Wednesday, had surgery the following Monday. Now, how many of y'all ever had any days in the Mayo Clinic? <coughs> They're booked out, what, six weeks? Sometimes more? So, first miracle. So, uh, that first surgery found a uh, non-aggressive, non-invasive uh, cancer, a little bit about bladders. The bladder itself, it consists of four layers. If the cancer is just in the inner layer, they can get it all, and they know that they've got it all and it tends to not come back. Uh, it gets all the way out to the outer layer, which is the muscle. <coughs> and Doc will correct me if I'm wandering off the playing field here. Then if it gets to there, it's very bad. If we're gonna get to there, I'll get to that. So, uh, so I had my first surgery, and then my second surgery uh, found it was a little more aggressive, all right? And they put me on a chemotherapy here. So, we found more cancer, it was more aggressive. They put me on a uh, chemotherapy, uh, a special kind of oncology. And uh, after that, I go in and I have my checkup at the oncology. Hello? Yeah. I'm not hot. There we go, there we go again. Um, they, they had, uh, they discovered a much larger tumor. And I went into the doctor and I scheduled a Mayo Clinic. And when I got in, this is where I got up, this was an invasive, highly aggressive, squamous cell defined cancer. Some of you medical types out there, you know that's a bad scene. And so 
That sent me back to the Mayo Clinic. They started, the doctor says, all we can do is remove your bladder and your prostate. I said, no, I don't want to do that. And, and then somebody else says, well, they have this uh, kind of uh, oncology that works about 80%. I said, oh, I'll take that. And uh, so into the middle of that, uh, I developed a severe reaction to the radiation, put me in the hospital for four days. And while I'm headed home, they canceled the oncology. I'm now back on throwing myself back on the uh, mercy of the surgeon. He says, now, now you're ready. He calls me on the drive home. Are you ready? And so I said, no. Now here's where the next miracle starts to come in. Hopefully I've got this timed out right. All right. The second miracle was Wildwood. And there's several miracles associated with this. The first miracle was that somewhere I heard of the name Wildwood Clinic. And somebody else mentioned it again, and that name stuck. Every time I thought about what am I going to do, that was the name that came to mind. I called them and I got in to see them right away. It's another small miracle. And I'll tell you now a little bit of the Wildwood, Wildwood program. One of the things I'm going to do, I'm leave on the back step, on the back table, I've got some brochures. If any of y'all are going through severe medical issues, the estimate is that 90 to 95 percent of all chronic medical issues are due to diet and can be cured by proper diet. And I will convince you that it worked in my case. So I have those. I'll have those on the back table. Uh, so they did an intake on us when I went with me, and they got all our symptoms. They looked at this, they looked at our medical records, we uploaded medical, medical records, and an MD looked at that and he customized a treatment program just for me and just for Gloria. So this is where it's kind of, a, kind of, kind of like the way that the Mayo Clinic does, they do tag team medical. You go in one guy, he brings in somebody else, they bring in somebody else and you talk it over and they figure out what they're going to do. So that's kind of what he did. So uh, part of what was there was a uh, special teas, special supplements, and an all-plant-based diet. They taught us about it, and then they get fed it to us. And I'll have to say, I was, I was a little worried when I heard about this plant-based diet. But God, it's good. It was good. You can have an all-plant-based diet and enjoy it. This old Texan used to eat steaks, but I became a vegetarian when I joined the vegetarian. Adventist Church, and just as a case this aside for it again, I started becoming a vegetarian. At age 50, I went out with a wheelbarrow and a shovel, and I leveled a hill. It took me three days to do it, and I was pushing the sand uphill. I did more work at age 55 than I could ever do at age 40. It was all that vegetarian diet. My energy, my strength, my stamina, it's been fantastic. It wasn't until 70 I started to fall apart. <laughs> at, 15, at, at 69, I felt like, uh, like I was middle-aged, although I didn't know very many people that were 140. So, anyway, uh, so, the side effects aside here, uh, and I to try to make this quick because this is this really, I don't want to make this about me, I want to make it about the Lord and His wonderful miracles. But anyway, uh, they also talked about exercise. And here's the interesting thing. The staff who were administering any kind of procedure would pray before and after. They had every morning there was a devotional time and they wrote a devotional thought. And there was walking and there was everybody praying for you. Everybody you were there with, you're praying for each other. It was an incredible experience. Gloria and I remember some of the highlights. So it includes things like contrast showers. By the way, there could be time for Q&A here, so if a question comes to your mind, just hang on to it. Contrast showers, sits, baths, steam baths, whirlpools, massages, all kinds of various things, plus a, a diet. And uh, uh, so the educational videos, lectures on diet and health, lifestyle, uh, I've said all this, I'm still no thing. And when you left, they left you with lots of resources. But after a copy of all the presentations and all the stuff they did, they left us with this little cookbook. And uh, for those of you that like to cook, 
I recommend it to you. I can send you the link to it. Great cookbook. I'm even learning to cook a few of the things out of there. Uh, I made one of them last night that came from, uh, came from there. It was a lemon meringue pie. And uh, I'll have to say it's pretty good. <laughs> and thanks to Judy, it was sugar free. There you are. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, and then for a year, they give you weekly Zoom lectures. Um, now, why was I cured? I think several things. First of all, all the prayers. I thank you for your prayers. I had many praying for me. So, number one, it's the will of God. He's got more work for me to do. And uh, so, I, I, thanks for your prayers. Amen. The other thing was, I remembered Wildwood. I got there. I followed their uh, directions to the letter ruthlessly. Um, and I got, uh, I would say, uh, I did all they told me to do except for two meals a day. I have this sky high metabolism, uh, which is why I tend to be gaunt. Uh, and I didn't make it on that one. Uh, so I had a follow up exam. And so on that follow-up exam, I had prayed beforehand, January 25th, I remember it well. And that probably the follow-up exam, I said, uh, Lord, I have a prayer. I want you to receive the glory. If I am healed, I don't want you to say it was all man. So what I said was, Lord, if you take, if you clean up the cancer, I want you to take away all the scars from the previous three surgeries, the last of which was high and great seen an invasive surgery. You with me? So I went to the doctor. The doctor came out, hey, there's no cancer. I turned to the doctor and said, hey, doc, did you see any scars? No, I did not. Tastes good. good. Yes. He loves us. He has a plan for us. No matter where we are or what's going on, to God be the glory. Amen. Because he knows our path. He knows our frame. He's not willing that any should perish. Psalm 103, the first few verses. Let me see if I can find that quickly. And if I, with the tears in my eyes, <coughs> I can read it. Or maybe we can get somebody else to read Psalm 103 for me. But I'll try it. This is how it goes. Uh, we had, we took a, a, a serving of nuts. 
We also took anti-inflammatories. One we took was uh, turmeric. I do that once to one to three times a day. I just take turmeric. Well, a, a teaspoonful of turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. It's a digestive aid. Ginger and other things. What did I do wrong? Questions? Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you. And so, yeah, the, the naturally occurring oils, uh, nuts, and things of that sort. So, uh, good question. Others? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. I, I, I'm reminded of uh, Dr. Bragg years ago that he passed an awful lot. Did you pass it? Not the pastor? Fast. 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 Um, that was not part of the program except what's called an intermittent fast. It's actually a great question. The intermittent fast is two meals a day. The objective being to give your digestive system 16 to 17 hours to complete the rest. And it will help reduce. You see, what kills us is, what really kills us is the inflammatory response of the body. Uh, some very specific benefits of the plant-based diet. If you have heart problems, I was going to give a brochure to B. Somebody be sure he gets one. One of the things that happens within three days of being a more plant-based diet, you can see the plaque being removed from the bloodstream. I have a video, I think it's in my briefcase, I can leave that out and you take a look at it. Or I can give you the name of it. Uh, if you'll pardon it, pardon the expression, it's what the health. <laughs> Easy to remember. And in that video, there was a lady who was on 20 prescription meds and walked like this with the walker. After one week on an all plant-based diet, she took her tray and on video dumped them all in the trash and was walking with a cane. There's more. It cures things like Crohn's disease. It cures things like heart disease. It cures cancer. So again, that's the all plant-based diet. So other questions? Yes, sir. I think I know what it is. We've mentioned a couple of times contrasting showers. Is that like a mud shower and then a uh, hot shower? Or? Well, they, they don't, I couldn't find the availability. I could not find a sauna in Edgewater. But basically, it's the old Finnish routine. You sit in the sauna and you jump and roll in the snow. I couldn't find either of those down here, as a matter of fact. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but the my uh, what I did was I would do some of those. They had me just take a steam bath, and then we had me go into shower, and they would just you know cool you down. And I said, man, give it to me, turn off the hot. You know? And uh, so now they sent me home. They said twice a day, go as hot as you can stand it, cold as you can stand it, and do that three times. I never did it twice a day, but I did it once a day. I'm now down to one. Every time I take a shower, I turn as hot as I can. I'm going stop to stop right now. Okay, so contrast ice. What does that do? Uh, showers. That opens your uh, all of your veins and your arteries and greatly improves the blood flow in the body, which can improve healing. Amen. Okay, so very good question. Thank you, Dennis. I'm forgetting some thunder. Yes, how many diseases were they trying to uh, attend to there? I thought, well, but, uh, you know, I don't know them all, but I know that the, there's a pastor that was there, and he's not even coming, but he's going to do this presentation for him down the road here somewhere. Uh, and it's another guy, I remember, he could not <coughs> eat anything. Always upset. His stomach was always upset. And I want to be sure, so don't let me get back to talking about stress. I need to be sure to hit that point briefly if I can. Um, but there was people there from all kinds of things. Couldn't eat. This guy, after being just there for 10 days, was eating and sleeping. He couldn't sleep more than a couple of hours and he couldn't eat. And so, I don't know what your condition is. You can call them, you can talk to them, you can grab a brochure. All right? If it's a chronic known disease, and that, that, is, that is not a natural response of the human body, it costs you nothing to try this. It is hard. Why does everybody eat an all plant-based diet? Give my camera a it fits over here. The reason is, it is hard, and it takes a commitment. Because if you're used to uh, burgers,
cooking steaks. Like for this old boy, I can put you, you ask me to cook you a steak and make it exactly the right color. I miss my steaks. But that was a long time ago. But you know, I, all plant based diets, and for some people, it's a dramatic change. And so they're unwilling to do it. But it's going to help everything in your life. There's nothing in your life that won't improve with an all plant based diet. Amen. Are potato chips part of your all plant diet? <laughs> huh. Busted. <laughs> I have been taking a few chances. I cut back about six months, about a couple of months ago. At the, at the six month point, I cut back. I'm still doing something they call an immunity tea. I take that every day, uh, twice a day, and so on. But yeah, you should do uh, Everything that comes in a box, everything comes at a fast food restaurant, nearly everything you buy in a, in a restaurant is probably not good for you. The very worst are processed meats and processed cheeses. If you're eating cheeses that you buy in the grocery store, you are doing your body a great <coughs> service. It's what, what, what clog your arteries and call arterial sclerosis in a very quick way. Yes. That's no. A little quick word on stress. <coughs> Could erase all this. All our foods, all these fat, bad foods that we eat, including stress in our lives, cause a stress response in the human body. All right, and that's what that's what ends up killing us. That's what shortens our life. Doc, keep me straight here. Uh, but one of the things they discovered is that high stress in the diet is that when we have free radicals in the body, we have high stress, we damage the, in, the tails of the DNA so that they cannot replicate or they replicate uncontrollably. All right? And so people that uh, uh, on a high stress diet, people that are eating fat foods like this, who have real high levels of mandate, uh, oxidants or free radicals in the body. By the way, that's why you take antioxidants, why vegetarian food will really help. My parents ate meat and they ate vegetables and they lived well. But that causes the DNA to be shortened. You can shorten your life as much as 5 to 15 years if you're eating, always eating a bad diet. Stress will do the same thing to you. Any other questions? On, on those showers, do you feel pretty <laughs> On those showers, do you finish with the hot or the cold? Always finish with the cold. Yeah. Uh, I, I just get in and I wash off and I get in and I just, then I just kick it as hard as I can stand it and I keep turning it up to I find it. Another thing I've discovered, by the way, is if you get it real hot, it's not that cold. But if you only get it sort of hot and then you turn it cold, ooh, it's still cold. <laughs> Even in the winter? I like the winters better because the water gets warm in the summertime. I only get, you're looking thirty. You're looking for a thirty degree temperature swing, all right, from hot to cold. And you can get books on this. There's an Adventist, Adventist bookstore on hydrotherapy. Get that book and study it. You can put your feet in hot water and your hands in cold water. I don't know how it works, but I know it does. How long hot? How long cold? Three minutes. Yes. <coughs> Three minutes is good. Great question. Great question. See, I told you once somebody asked a question, it would open floodgates. It's like high school or, or, or grade school. You never want to raise your hands because somebody might laugh. So here's one for you. How do you get over the smell of bacon? <laughs> We're still working on that. <laughs> okay. Okay, how to get over the smell of bacon. Very nice. I love this church. Amen. This church is so wonderful because you, you love the, the 1888 message. Amen. And I can see this church being part of that company. That's good. And that's exciting. Any other questions? Well, church family, I really appreciate you asking questions. You, you're taking good care of me here. Um, it was not that hard to leave our other church, although I missed the people there. And I felt more at home here, I think, in any place I've been in a church. So thank you. Amen. Um, I don't think we have anything else or not. End of slideshow. Okay, I guess I'm, guess I'm done. We have a, a closing hymn.
and then I'll clean up my stuff here. Please turn in your hymnals to